August 28, 2020. Mom parks the box truck next to a municipal green mini dumpster at a low end gas station and struggles with the door latch, which is old and requires finesse. I take over as mom goes into the store and am wrestling with getting a long finger width spring to latch into the external mirror assembly on the passenger side. I'm getting some help from Ernest Harris, a retired Jamaican watch repairman who sings reggae and owns a big stage and sound system. He's missing an arm, but more than makes up for it with positive mental attitude and seemingly limitless energy. Ernest is reminding me at this time of this African security guard from New England Conservatory who Emilio and I became friendly with and who taught us a hand greeting from his home country where each person snaps all of their fingers against the fingers of the fellow greeter using the thumbs as leverage. Brah. Another really positive person, he seemed quite content, sitting at the entrance to the school, wearing a red jacket, and receiving anxious, insecure, and generally spoiled young musicians all day. Ernest has a bunch of provisions in the truck's container, which I examine, hoping to impart a gesture of gratitude for his help. He declines an offer of toaster pancakes because he's had his quota of sweets, he says, and they are his leftovers from breakfast anyway. A handful of programmers and engineers assemble in the container of the truck, where Timothy Trespass complains about compliance and acquiescence toward planned obsolescence, boasting his continued accomplishments on some ancient hardware system. Tim moved into our neighborhood in Hoboken as a teenager and fellow music obsessor. We've stayed in touch over the years, even living together in the windowless Mutiny Zoo studios for a while. A mutual friend thought we'd be a good influence on Tim, but I'm pretty sure we weren't. Tim had, during his tenure as an engineer at Chung King House of Metal, acquired some nefarious medicinal habits, which we, at the time, were only too eager to experience and explore ourselves. He was recently featured in a New York Times article on gang stalking, targeted individuals, and what one psychologist cited in the article refers to as an echo chamber of paranoia. He has a pretty visceral YouTube channel, and it's miraculous he's still alive. Here in the box truck, Tim's technical prowess is, as always, impressive. But I wonder if he's not limiting himself by sticking with such antiquated technology. He and another guy are working with an instrument that's shaped like a toy flatbed truck about 
18 inches long by 7 wide. The instrument combines sound oscillators with lasers or some other form of directed light and generates a three-dimensional series of interlocking trapezoids reminiscent of the structural elements of a truss bridge. The color of the light is a green azure, like at the edge of a solar-treated car window, except more sky blue than pond green. The color of the taste of mint. Tim and the colleague discuss the polarity of each path of the generated structure, following it with their fingers as they consider mathematical formulae, adjusting dials to increase the scope of the design and sound, which consists of interwoven pulses of overtone resonance, sounding an obscure, distinctive melody. Thank you.